said, I will tell you that having it over a decade in the security industry, um, it really is not something that you want to have to do to go up to somebody's family member after work one day and say, hey, here's the reason why your loved one's not coming home. So I can appreciate what happens in these environments, whether it's a theater or especially in schools where, you know, there's people left behind to have to say, look, I'm so sorry your kid's not coming home today, right? Um, with that in mind, I, I think one thing that always really gets back to hey, me is to the main office. how hey, we are left to the with a lot of questions and not a lot of answers after, after these types of things. One thing that people always say is, right away, we should just take guns away, right? And on its face, that sounds like a pretty good solution. You know, just take the guns away and it goes away. However, in America, with the hundreds of millions of guns that are out there, that's probably not going to happen in full, so there's still going to be guns out there in bad people's hands. Um, and also, you, you, there's more ways to hurt people than just uh, shooting them, right? 2014 in Pittsburgh, there was a school mass stabbing, not shooting. Anybody remember that on the news? That's kind of eerie. I mean, so bad people will do bad things even if they don't have a gun as their tool. Um, teachers, educators alike, parents and concerned citizens should all really be concerned about this because we are talking about not only our own safety in certain environments, but we're certainly talking about our children's safety and your own safety in this particular environment, right? Other states have already adopted solutions that could be adopted in Virginia. That's not to say they will, but an example of that is the 2014 school year in Missouri started off with teachers uh, being armed. Now, these people are anonymous. They were, their training was anonymous. Um, so everything about it is, so when they walk into a classroom, they're not walking in and strapped like Detective Soho. Um, they've actually, you know, they got the gun, they know where to get to it. Ms. Lee, please call the main office. Ms. Lee, please call the main office. So <coughs> when you really consider it, solutions are out there, and I don't know about you guys, but it seems like debate has turned into bickering as to what to do, so it's turned into inaction. Um, my solutions aren't exactly exhaustive either. I know there's a lot better ideas out there on things we can do. The things that I would like to introduce to you today are just that, just some solutions that are simple and meant to not take away a lot of our rights. Alexis Vaughn, please report to the cafeteria. So, Alexis Vaughn, please report to the cafeteria. What could we do to start to reduce mass shootings? I would submit to you that we could offer better mental health care that is definitely a solution that's been on my mind for quite some time since this has come to the forefront. I think we need to change the way the media reports. They focus on the shooter, right? We could add more armed personnel in strategic environments. That doesn't necessarily mean arming teachers, by the way. I'll get to that later on. Um, and you know what? It kind of coupled with that whole um, mental health system type of deal going on. You know what we really need to, need to make a part of that? Programs that really work with our school psychologists, administrators, and educators that help develop kids' social skills so that by the time they're 13, the only way that they know to interact is Facebook or a text. That's terrible. We really need to work on that because a lot of these people that have committed these heinous acts, they didn't have very good social skills. So America does have a problem, and I don't think more gun laws would fix it. I think kind of enforcing some of the gun laws you already have would help out, right? These crimes do tend to occur a lot in high traffic areas um, where there's very few armed people. Newtown, Connecticut is a perfect example, a school shooting. Adam Lanza, he's got some mental illness going on. He's also autistic. And then you've got the Aurora, Colorado, the theater shooting that happened. And James Holmes, I don't know if you knew this or not, but he actually tried to self-diagnose himself with a mental illness before he did all this, yet somehow he was still able to get his hands on crazy amounts of ammunition and obviously the weapons to commit the crime. It's, it's pretty insane when you really stop to think about it. So schools, as far as causes and effects, schools and arenas like that, and I, I'm going to use a rough term because I don't really know a better one, um, but 
it's like shooting fish in a barrel. You've got a bunch of unarmed people. Um, they're in a safe environment until some crazed lunatic enters it with a gun, right? And now you've got a limited amount of exits. Like, if something happened right now, how would you get out of here? You know, I don't. I, I have no idea. I'd run behind one of you guys for sure. <laughs> but, so these places are gun-free zones, so they're easy to target. Did you know that total health care costs from 1986 to 2009 rose from 10% of all U.S. spending to 17%? Mental health care cost spending, flat, 1%. So we haven't reinvested in that. And I'll tell you, there's a lot of people out there. There's a lot of, as much good can happen in somebody's life with promotions and, and marriages and, and, and babies being born. There's a lot of bad that happens. And a lot of times people don't have family members there that are equipped to do it. Maybe we need some better mental health care workers and professionals to do it with them, right? So that all leads to the mental health care problem. It leads to a lack of beds and facilities for people with acute illnesses that really need attention right now, right? And it also leads to a lack of administrative fees. I mean, administrative uh, funding, which leads to not a lot of reporting going on. And like the guy from Roanoke, right? Reporter a few weeks back, that guy bought the guns legally. He had had mental health issues in the past. Why was that not in a system somewhere? Why was it not in a system? Crazy. And the, the media, you know, I mean, come on, guys. 24 hours a day, it's a cycle. You got CNN, Fox News, they all want ratings. And the way to get it is James Holmes did this, shot people, blood splattering all over everywhere. And they focus on the shooter. And they even focus on that guy six, seven months down the road when he's at trial. But you know what? Right now, you know Adam Lanza's name, don't you? You know James Holmes' name. You, and as recent, as horrific as it is from the Charleston shooting, you know Dylan Roof's name. I guarantee you, you can't probably tell me one name of the victims, right? Probably not at all. Um, so the significance of all of this most of these perpetrators are mentally ill. That, that's proven out. Um, you, you, can, you can do your own research on it. I know I certainly did a lot of research uh, to show that these people are usually mentally ill. And what we do need is we do need more trained people in environments such as this to provide safety and security. And we do need the media to focus more on the tragedy of the victims and less on the crazed lunatic that committed the act, right? So as far as solutions, I'll reiterate them real quick here. Better mental health care system. You couple that with social skills that can be funded at the school level through the mental health care system to make sure that real professionals are being able to provide that and get information from the faculty, the teachers that have to support these kids every day by educating them, right? And you also have more armed personnel. Now, you might not want a gun, you might not want a gun, and nobody might not want but you know what? Would it hurt to have another uh, resource officer at this school? Probably not. We, we've got, we've, we're all twisted up. People say there's no funding out there, no money for this, no money for that, right? But at the end of the day, a lot of money goes to a lot of places it shouldn't, and we still continue to see these types of violent crimes, mass shootings happen in our schools and happen in our public places. So if we do increase funding for the mental health care part of it, that does trigger a mechanism to where you can actually report better and maybe even link that up and partner with databases, right? So our plan of action is more armed personnel in school or even more resource officers. Um, as far as the media goes, let's don't focus so much on the shooters. And as far as the solvency, I think that continued, the continued education and continued commitment to funding would definitely create a spirit and an environment of um, and as far as what we see tomorrow versus today, see in America where people go out and they're not afraid, that happens if we take these solutions and maybe some others that people could submit. If we don't, inaction leaves you afraid, looking over your shoulder, and our kids are still worried about being in their own skin. So with that said, I do appreciate your time. And I thank you for being here, and I hope you will consider my solutions and um, hope you have got some benefit.